This is Hadoop High Availability in a hurry, part one, HDFS. Hi, I'm Marcian Krijgsman. I've been learning about Hadoop High Availability for the Hortonworks Data Platform Certified Administrator exam. I thought the material to learn about this topic was a little dry. Surely we can do better, and this is my attempt, so I hope it's useful to you. Let me know in the comments. Now, here's a very simple depiction of an HDFS cluster. Now, the D from HDFS stands for distributed. Your data will be distributed across several nodes. Now, suppose we want to write something, so we use an HDFS client to write a file to the data nodes. But the file is too big, so Hadoop will split this file into several blocks on the storage. Now you notice that this block goes to two locations, two data nodes. This is called replication. This is a replication factor of two. And you can turn replication off, but we're talking about high availability here. So I can't think of a reason why you want high availability, but no replication. So here's block two on data node one and two. And here is block three and block four. And you see uh, it's all randomly placed on the data nodes. Now, how does the name node know where these blocks are? Well, it gets block reports from the data nodes and it has some administration in the form of an FS image file. The FS image file tells where all the blocks are and the edits file is the file where all the changes are written down, noted as it were. And this is a rather important file, this edits file because the FS image file is not updated all that much, because it turns out that updating the FS image file is rather a lot of resource intensive work. Should one of these data nodes get broken and an HDFS client still wants to read these blocks that were on that node, luckily we have another copy on other data nodes, thanks to replication. Now, when we lose the name node, that's a different story because this is the library where we can find all these blocks. Lose the library, lose the cluster. That's the story. So should we lose the FS image file and the edit file, that would be a bad thing. So first of all, we need to back these up. But wouldn't it be great if there was a second name node of some kind where we could switch to, so to keep things running. And that is the secondary name node, aptly named, I'd say. And this one gets a copy of the FS image file and the edits file. But apart from that, high availability wise, it doesn't do all that much. Yes, sure, in reality, the secondary name node is useful for all kinds of stuff. It, you can run CPU intensive stuff on it. But if you want to keep this cluster running, an operator has to do something manually. That means that someone needs to actively make the secondary node the active one, swear it in and solve problems at the other side. Now, whether that is good enough depends on your organization. This is not a technical question. If nobody minds that the Hadoop cluster is gone for a moment, then fine, you can stop here. If your Hadoop cluster is used in multiple time zones and is very critical, maybe you have to do a little bit extra. So we're going to introduce an extra type of name node and it's the standby name node. The standby name node is very much like the active name node. All the data nodes send their block reports and heartbeats to both the active and the standby name node. But what about the edits file? Well, we now have a shared edits lock. And it's not just on one node, it's on several nodes where there is a journal node process. This is a lightweight process and you can run it on any node, but you shouldn't run it on the active or the standby name node. I'm not even sh sure that's possible, but you shouldn't. Now, what about the FS image file? Well, that, as far as I can tell, is still on the name nodes. Each one has a copy. Now the active name node is the only one that writes to the shared edits log to the journal nodes. The other ones, they just read from the shared edits log. 
So that's all well and good. But now, picture this scenario. At a certain point, something happens where the standby name node cannot see the active name node anymore. What is standby name node to do? Now, you could imagine it working like this, that the standby name node thinks there's no active name node anymore. I have to become the active name node. In such a scenario, the standby name node needs to read the edits log first before it can become active, and then it will write to the shared edits log. And then the connection is okay again. Then again, we have two active name nodes. This is called a split brain scenario. And it is bad because now you have two name nodes calling the shots and writing each to the shared edit lock and it will be probably corrupted. So you can't have that and therefore Hadoop has a solution. You're gonna need a zookeeper. In fact, a cluster of zookeepers. Now you might ask where that came from, but this is actually the name of a component in Hadoop, the zookeeper. Zookeeper is a component that can handle small bits of data, administrative stuff for other components, monitoring for other components, and for example, the election of an active name node. And for this, we're gonna need a process on the active and the standby name node as well, and this is called the Zookeeper Failover Controller. And this Zookeeper Failover Controller, ZKFC, very nice abbreviation, will try to get a lock on that C node. And this Z node only lasts for a short time. And every time the active name node has to claim the lock, and if it's not present to claim that lock, then this will be the signal for the standby name node to take over that lock and become the active name node. It's a bit like the tail of the sword and the stone, where Arthur is the only one who can get the sword from the stone Except in this version of the story, Arthur gets to keep the sword only for a short time and the sword returns back to the stone where he has to claim it yet again. Okay, I don't think Disney is willing to pay for this scenario, but that is how it works. So are we done now with the high availability story? Well, close, but there's one small thing we have to take care of. If we do a fill over from the active name node to the standby name node, there is a possibility that there are HTFS clients who still have a connection with the previously active name node. And if the previously active name node is still serving them old or maybe corrupt metadata. So we need to do something about that and that is called fencing. And Hadoop has two methods to do this fencing. Uh, one is called SSH fence, which makes an SSH connection to the old active name node and kills all the connections. And the other one is called script, because you can run your own script to do the fencing in any way you like. And that is the story about high availability in Hadoop. If you're a Hadoop engineer or operator, I hope you now can sleep at night without being called to wake up secondary name nodes. Thank you for watching. I hope you had fun and learned something. If you want to know more, read my blog. It's called Expedition Data. You can follow me on Twitter at MarcelianKR. I'm available as data engineer via Open Circle Solutions, available for parties and weddings. Feedback is welcome. So please leave a comment and until the next video, bye bye.